Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at Fredsville Lutheran Church. Whether you have attended worship here since birth or this is your first time attending here, whether in person or online, we are very happy that you are here for worship. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Fredsville, especially those of you joining us online, we are a congregation of the ELCA located between Cedar Falls and Dyke, Iowa. My name is Meredith Sandlin and I will be your lay worship leader today. And we welcome guest pastor Victoria Shepherd, who will be giving today's sermon and presiding over communion. With the celebration of communion, if you are not here in person, we invite you to get bread or crackers and wine or juice so that you may also partake in the sacrament. Those of you here in person will come down the center aisle, receive the wafer in your hand, take a cup of wine or grape juice from the tray, and then uh, dispose of the cup in the baskets beside the communion rail and return by the side aisle. If you prefer not to come forward, you may take a communion set from the baskets in the pew or notify an usher that you would like communion brought to you in the pew. This morning, we add to our prayer list Larry Driesman, who is going to Mayo on August 30th to be treated for liver and pancreatic cancer. We also will be praying for Darwin Canigator for whom we pray for healing for a leaking valve in his heart and leaking blood into his lungs. Darwin will be having open-heart surgery on Monday in Iowa City. And then we pray for Larry Everts, who is being treated for cancer and blood clots at Mayo. In service to others, we continue to collect donations of pop can tabs, non-perishable food, and pill bottles. There's a place at the back of the sanctuary to place your donations, And especially thank you to those of you who have already contributed quite generously. If you prefer to give online to that ministry, you may go to fredsvillelutheran.org slash give and then specify in the box that that donation is for a specific ministry. And also in the worship gathering space, we have four greeting cards to sign for members who are unable to worship with us in person. We ask that you please take time to sign those and write a brief greeting even if you don't know them. They really appreciate the thought in remembrance, and they are part of the Fredsville family and of God's family, even if they're not here in person. Uh, We particularly note that one is for Jean Knapp, who recently celebrated a special 100-plus years birthday, and for Luella Larson, who is moving to Oline. Also, there is a card for condolences to the Wikers family on the recent death of their beloved husband and father, Mike Wikers. Finally, we have an interim pastor, Pastor Lee Gable, who will be beginning his time serving Fredsville on October 1st. And Pastor Lee has sent us a video that we will play now to introduce himself to you. 
Hi, I'm Pastor Lee Gable. I bring you greetings from Pennsylvania, where I have been serving three rural congregations for the past eight and a half years. My heart is in rural ministry. I am originally from Kylertown, Pennsylvania, where my family owns and operates an industrial electrical contracting business. I studied construction management and electricity at the Pennsylvania College of Technology in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. After seven years in electricity, God invited me into a new vocational journey, and I moved to Iowa to attend Wartburg Theological Seminary, where I met and married my spouse, Pastor Dina Gable, who was from Minnesota and served her first call in Waterloo before we moved to our calls in Pennsylvania. While in this call, I have created a worship environment where reverent joy is shared across generations. We cultivate curiosity in weekly Bible study and seasonal book studies, and together we explore our questions and dwell deep in prayer. From the youngest to the oldest, we all have something to learn and something to share in beloved community. In the community, we have embodied grace, reaching out in generous love, engaged in faithful conversations, and come together in compassionate care for one another. I enjoy engaging in conversations around the table, at a campfire, or playing pickleball. Ministry happens where you are, and Jesus calls us into ministry in our daily life together. Pastor Dina and I have been married for eight and a half years. She is now called to serve at St. Timothy Lutheran Church in Hudson, Iowa. Together, we enjoy traveling, hiking, and working in the care of creation. We have an 11-year-old Rhodesian Ridgeback mix named Missy. She loves naps, walks, and toy pigs. I'm excited about joining the ministry going on at Fredsville Lutheran Church and in the Northeastern Iowa Synod. The Holy Spirit is on the move among you. You face the challenges set before you with faith and hope active in love, reaching out to neighbors near and far in this world that God so loves. I will accompany you with collaborative leadership, listening ears, a compassionate heart, and new perspectives so that together we can work to enhance the ministry of Fredsville Lutheran Church and prepare for future generations on this holy ground. I will bring my gifts in preaching, worship, spirituality, and everyday life to make connections across generations and dovetail with all the gifts that you already have for ministry. I look forward to engaging with our neighbors in the community and thinking creatively about how we share the gospel of Jesus Christ and embody the kingdom for which we pray. I welcome the opportunity to walk with all of you and see where God is inviting us on this journey of faith. May God's blessings be with you this day and always. Are there any other announcements, celebrations, or prayer requests? All right, let's take a moment to pray, prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Hear these words from Romans 12, verse 16. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Invited and invited, that is the nature of the church. By God's grace in holy baptism, we have a place at Christ's banquet table. When, by the power of that same spirit, Humility and mutual love continue among us. 
the church can be more inviting still. Love one another. Please stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seat at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. As forgiven and forgiving children of God, let us greet each other with a sign of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. At this time, I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another, then remain standing for the hymn.
Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Today's first reading is from Proverbs, chapter 25, verses 6 and 7. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. We will read Psalm 112 responsibly, and the congregation please read the bold print. Alleluia! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice, for they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. <clears throat> their desires of the wicked will perish. Please stand as you are able for the gospel reading this morning. The gospel comes to us from the 14th chapter of Luke, beginning at the first verse. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place, and then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, and the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and I am going to do a children's sermon this morning since we have several children with us. And I'm just going to have you stay standing, okay? Come right on up. Kind of gather around me. I'm the, I'm the important person this morning that Jesus is talking about. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So, first of all, how's school? Good? Good? Are you just saying that? You really, it's really good. Okay. That's good to hear. It's always kind of hard to go back, but you get used to it after a while, and you get to see all your friends every day. Yeah, it's nice. 
Okay, so the gospel lesson for today is what we're going to talk about. Um, I guess I don't need this right now. Jesus walks into a party, and he's not very happy because there are people, lots of people at that party, but he always thinks, Jesus always thinks about the people who are not there, right? The people who weren't invited. Have you ever been invited to a party? A birthday party? Oh, sure, we've all been invited to parties, haven't we? All right. So, um, I ha- I'm going to, and Jesus told two parables, which are stories that he, he tells to make us think. Okay, so today I'm doing sort of a, a, a parable. And I'm going to pretend like I'm having a party. Okay, and I'm sending an invitation. But I have how many invitations? Two. Two. All right. And um, so um, I'm going to open one of them. And this one says, can anybody read this? Come to my party. And what else does it say? See inside for guest list. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand, if you can, if you are able. And uh, when I, when I, um, I'm going to t- say who can't come to the party. And if you, if you're one of these, if you match one of these, you have to sit down. Okay. And the same goes for you all. Okay. No one with blue eyes can come. Who has blue eyes? Oh my gosh, everybody's sitting down. No, no. You kind of have blue eyes, so sit down. (laughs) You don't have blue eyes. No, you don't. Okay. Okay, anyone who has a cat for a pet. Now, if I were standing, I'd be sitting down because I have cats. I have two cats. Anyone whose birthday is in June, July, or August. Oh boy. Yours is when? When's your birthday? No. Oh, okay. April. So you're still standing. Okay. Anyone whose favorite color is purple? You have to sit down if your favorite color is purple. So look around, people. There aren't many people left, are there? No? This is going to be kind of a small party. Well, that's... And you may be seated now. And that's kind of what was happening that day when Jesus went to that party. But I have a second invitation. I like this invitation. All right, this invitation says, come to my party. Everyone is invited. Everyone is invited. Love God. So everybody stand up. Every, you don't have to again. You don't have to again. Everybody's coming to the party. So I have something for each of you, but let's, let's have a prayer first, and I'm going to say something, and then you can repeat after me, okay? Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, Jesus has shown us that we must love everyone. Thank you, God, for your love. Amen. All right, now I have something for each of you because this is a party. It's a little party favor. But you can't open it until you go home outside, okay? Because I don't think the custodian would like it if you open them in the church because they're bubbles. All right? So you can each have one. Take the one you like, whatever color you like. But don't open them until you're on your way home and you're outside. Or you... Oh, yes, you can take it. She, okay. Oh, of course. That is the loving thing to do. 
Okay. Oh, you, she's going to pick her own. Okay. Just one. Oh, she's got two. That's all right. Grandma didn't need one, okay. All right. So are we going to open them? No, we're going to wait. You have to wait. Okay, all right. You can go back to your seats now. Thank you for coming up. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. It's great to be here again with you. It's been a little while. I'm going to start by telling a story about when I served at, as a pastor at St. Peter Lutheran Church in Denver, Iowa. After I'd been there a little while, the men decided that we needed to resurrect a men's Bible study breakfast that had gone on Years ago, it had been started by a previous pastor. And I thought, okay. <laughs> and the men's Bible study had been a weekly event at a local restaurant. So every Thursday at 7 a.m., a very sizable group of men from the congregation, and even some that were not part of the congregation, and one woman, which would be me, we would gather at the right spot is what it was called then. I don't think it's called that anymore, but you may have eaten there before. And we gathered there to kibitz, to drink coffee, eat breakfast, and to study the scripture readings for the coming Sunday. I will never forget the morning. Today's gospel reading from Luke was the scripture for the coming Sunday. When I arrived, the guys were gathering and sitting in their usual places. It was kind of like church on Sunday. Everyone had their seat at the table, including me. I had one, too, that I always sat at. Coffee was served, and orders were taken by the waitress. And we'd done it so long that the waitress really didn't even... I mean, she knew most of what everybody was going to order. She didn't have to write it down. So then I stood up. And over their chattering, <clears throat> I called them to attention. I, I didn't know how this was going to go. But I asked them to humor me and to stand up and move to a different place at the table. If they sat at a particular end, they were to move to the other end, and so on. And their request was just to move from their usual spot to a different spot. Well, they sat there for a moment, obviously in disbelief that I would ask them to do this. You want us to do what? You really mean it? Yeah, I mean it. There was some hesitation and some grousing, but they all got up and they did what I asked. They humored me. And after some shuffling of water glasses and coffee cups, they all managed to move out of their usual place into a new place at the table. It was quite amusing, actually. After all were settled, I asked, so how did that little exercise in upsetting the apple cart make you feel? And they answered, honestly, uncomfortable. And one of the guys pointed out, if we get the wrong breakfast order this morning, it will be your fault. Well, he was kidding, of course. But I came back with, oh no, it won't be my fault. You can all blame Jesus. So I was also asked, or I asked them what they thought about me doing that at worship on Sunday. And they said, well, you'd be taking your life in your own hands. So I, 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 I didn't do that. But anyway, I got the idea for that from today's gospel lesson it is about Jesus challenging the uncomfortable. Isn't that just like Jesus? We can be sure that when Jesus comes in contact with Pharisees, when Jesus does something on the Sabbath, when Jesus sits down to a meal, there will most likely be a disruption of some sort involved. As it says in the first verse, they were watching him closely. 
as the Pharisees always do. Putting together a gathering at a home of a leader of the Pharisees, plus it being the Sabbath, and then adding in Jesus, could make for a volatile combination. Well, Jesus didn't disappoint. He walks in, noticing how the guests have seated themselves, and pre- proceeds to tell them a parable. Honestly, it doesn't sound too bad at first. Jesus simply seems to be offering a bit of, of, of advice on the seating arrangement. When you're invited to a banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor, on and on. And, um, and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And he may say to you, friend, move up higher, and then you will be honored. In the presence, we read that in the gospel. And actually, nothing Jesus has said so far seems too harsh or a cause for the Pharisees to get all bent out of shape. Or is it? The real glitch comes when Jesus says, all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And all those who humble themselves will be exalted. That is a shocking statement. That is a statement that could get you killed. You see, in Jesus' day, humility meant something different than it does to us in our day. Humility meant to be put to shame. Humbling oneself would mean being like a child. And women, and especially children, were of little or no value in the Greco-Roman society. Exalting oneself was the order of the day. High rank was the goal of life. Now the Pharisees are listening closely because Jesus is no longer offering advice on banquet etiquette. He's talking about honor and shame and social position and political standing, and these things matter more than just about anything in Jesus' day. Jesus is not giving good advice. He's upsetting the cultural apple cart. He's challenging the status quo. He's messing with the pecking order. He's asking them to do something that runs against the cultural grain of the day. And to their listening ears, what he was saying is absurd. And it is certainly stacking the cards against him. The truth of the matter is that in Jesus' day, guest lists and seating charts had become a matter of benefits and rewards rather than love and mercy and justice. And Jesus is always thinking, as I said in the children's sermon, about those who are not invited to the banquet. Jesus expects his hearers to stop counting the costs, benefits, and rewards of their actions and to live out of a sense of abundance and blessing. Even in our culture, counting and comparing is so prevalent. It is so pervasive that we can almost forget such cultural pressures exist and how those unwritten rules put a tremendous burden on us and others. There are invisible lines, or maybe not so invisible lines, which exist to divide us in the haves and the have-nots, the worthy, the unworthy, the deserving and the undeserving. Our culture assigns labels that degrade and perpetuate stereotypes. Our culture puts so much focus on what we might lose, making us unable to focus on all that we already have and all that we have already gained. And often important decisions are made based on an ethos ethos of scarcity rather than abundance. What will I lose? This way of life tends to elicit fear and can steal our freedom to live with a heart of thankfulness, being grateful for each day and for what we have and the sharing of what we have with others. In the second parable, Jesus suggests that hosts should invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind rather than their rich friends and neighbors or relatives in case they might invite you in return and then you would be repaid. I would imagine the hair stood up on the back of the Pharisees' necks when they heard that. Isn't that the point? To be repaid? Remember, this was a cost-benefit society. 
And to invite the lowly ones of the society into our home, well, remember, providing for the poor was a justice issue in Jesus' day. And Jewish law required it. But to have them at your table and treat them as equals, now that's another thing. Jesus, indeed, came with a message that made people so uncomfortable. They wanted to kill him. And we know, we know that they did. We did. But Jesus is not teaching something new in this house of a leader of the Pharisees on this particular Sabbath. This is not new good news. This is not about etiquette. But Jesus is talking about what God has always been calling God's people to do. And now Jesus is asking God's people to embrace what God has called his people to do since creation. God's ethic is one of radical hospitality and radical inclusivity. There are many examples of that ethic in the Bible, such as Mary's Magnificat, which calls for the uplifting of the lowly, Jesus' healings of persons with impairments and his solidarity with tax collectors and other stigmatized persons, women. God's ethic eliminates the need to be on the top or the best or the richest or whatever shapes the ethos of the prevailing culture. When we practice God's ethic, we need to constantly be assessing our worth and the worth of others, and that is eliminated. It frees us to be children of God that we are. As Christians, we know Jesus rose again so that death could have not have the last word and that all of God's children might have life and have it abundantly. That's how God's love works then and still now. That apple cart upset that occurred all those years ago in Denver was just a little snapshot of what it feels like when we're called to experience something new. We are human, after all, but as one of the St. Peter men said that day, the food tastes good at this end of the table, too. Indeed, it does. Maybe it tastes even better. Indeed, they were watching Jesus closely, and when we say that we are Christians and we follow Christ, people are going to be watching us too. Certainly what we do for others is not for show, and it does not make us somehow more deserving or more worthy of God's love. We have that already. As Lutheran Christians, our faith is built on the good news that even though we deserve nothing, we have and are given everything. We are saved by grace through faith. And in response to the abundant love and forgiveness and mercy that is all of ours in Christ Jesus, we are called to extend God's ethic of radical hospitality and radical inclusivity in our daily lives. Jesus' call to reorder our lives can make us uncomfortable too. But Jesus doesn't make us uncomfortable to shame or to humiliate us, but to exalt us to free us so that we might taste the love and joy and freedom that comes in loving God and loving one another, unencumbered by all that weighs us down in this life. Jesus only wants the very best for all of God's children. May God be present at our tables this week. Beloved, you are deeply and unconditionally loved. And God's love tastes good no matter what end of the table we sit at. And now may the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the one, the Holy One, in prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray. For our volunteers, employees, and committee members, we give thanks for their dedication and service. Awaken in all of us a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward in hospitality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. We pray for those devastated by heat, drought, floods, storms, and other natural disasters. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. We especially pray for the people of Ukraine. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for the ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear. We pray especially for the incarcerated and those separated from loved ones. Comfort all who are sick and seeking healing. Especially we name Kennedy Ray, the Hoyan family, Jeff, Tim, Carol, Jim and Jane, Marcia, Adeline, Shannon, Larry D, Darwin, and Larry E. We pray for the Wikers family as they navigate through the sudden loss of their husband and father, Mike. We pray for all who are sad and grieving, who may be feeling overwhelmed with the emotions of loss and stress. Merciful God, receive our prayers. For all the saints who confess God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. We will continue our worship with the collecting of the offering.
Please stand if you are able. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our praise. and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. All are welcome. The ushers will guide you forward down the center aisle, or you may use the communion sets in the pews.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink. The body and blood of Christ now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.